And welcome back to the Cabbage Patch. I'm Dad. I'm Tommy. And Gus. And what did we play today? Ghostbusters. Oh, who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. That was a game that fell down. We'll play that later. Uh, Ghostbusters. It's a game for four players. It's cooperative. Um, you play the uh, uh, Ghostbusters from the 80s movies. You play Peter Venkman and Winston Zenimore and e Egon Spengler and Ray Stantz. And you're driving through a city map that is uh, part of a scenario card where ghosts have appeared and there are all these gates that are spewing the ghosts out and then there's some boss at the end of the level, right? Slimer or some other dude. Slimer or the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man or some other dude who we don't know who he is, but he looks pretty cool too. So I guess that's the thing we can show. It's like you could you could face Mr. Stay Puft. But that's an advanced thing. So we played the beginning. We played the beginning level, which was a single level. You can play a campaign, which means that you can play one mission and then another mission and then another mission. And as you play through the missions, you get experience points. We'll talk about that in a second. And your character levels up. But this mission, we just played one. We just played the one with Slimer. And the way the game works is, well, how does the game work, Tommy? What, what do you do? Like your characters can do what? You're like you were the first player. What did you do? You get two actions. Two actions. What are your actions? So. Well, first you sh you should probably get out of the car. All right. So That's we, one action. we started in the Ecto One here, and there's a little tile over here that represents the car. So Tommy's first action would be to get out of the car. That's one thing you can do. What's another thing you can do? You can also move. You can move. You can move up to two spaces. You can move diagonally too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. And what else can you do? You can also zap a ghost. You can zap a ghost with your proton pack. All right. How do you zap ghosts? You roll this. You roll dice. the die. All right. So that's the interesting thing here. So the ghosts come in different classes, right? So this is a this is a level two. This is a level three. And where's level one? This is a level one. Let's see if we can show all three of those right Dollar. there. Can we show all three of those? Yeah, Dollar. they're right there. Level one, level two, level three. So level one ghosts have a certain number of hit points. And you get these cards here that explain that. So level one ghosts just need to be zapped once. Yeah. And they only slime you if you're right next to them. And you need to hit them. You need to roll a three or higher. So if you roll that die and you get a one, you missed. So what happens, interestingly, there is they also have, when you miss on the card, what happens? On a level one ghost... It just runs in random direction. It moves two spaces in a random direction. At the top of the board here is this... Let me put that there. Is the PKE meter that's got eight numbers on it, and you roll the eight-sided dice, and it's a five. So the ghosts would move diagonally in that direction. This this can be oriented anywhere, but where however it's oriented, once it's on the board, it doesn't move. So he missed this ghost. It moves two spaces in, or yeah, two spaces in that random direction. One, two. All right. All right, so what else can you do with your turn? Well, you can rest, which gets off any and all slime on you. We haven't talked about slimes, but yeah, that's one thing you can do. You can also deposit ghosts into... The spirit realm. Into the, into the Ecto-1, which sends them over here to the spirit realm. All right. So you get four actions. After you take your four actions, you're allowed to do something called a maneuver. And the maneuver is either get in or get out of the, or get in or get out of the car. Or, I think, deposit ghosts is the other one. Where did the instructions go? There they are. Maneuvers can be transfer trap ghosts with an, to an adjacent Ghostbuster, so you can give ghosts to another Ghostbuster. Sure. If you're in the car, they go into the spirit realm. We'll talk about that in a second. Or get in, get in or get out of the car. Right? For example, if Sidamore has two different ghosts and you have a ghost that's different to his two, Right. You can give it to him. Right. So we haven't talked about that. Up. So each of the characters has an ability, and their first level ability is how they get experience points. Right, Gus? Mm -hmm. How do you get experience points as Egon Spengler? You, you. How do you get experience points? You get one. You get a, you roll a one. So if you shoot at the ghost and you roll a one. That's a three. But if you were to roll a one, you'd get an experience point. And each of the cards has a tracker down here that, it, that gives you, that moves your experience points up. So we played the beginning mission, which is a 
we started out at level two, which means that not only did we have our experience point ability, but we also had a second ability. So every time Gus misses with a one, he gets an experience point. Like that. Every like that. Every time I get slime, we'll talk about that in a second, I get an experience point. So if a ghost during one of those movements that we just talked about moves through a Ghostbuster, that Ghostbuster gets a slime token. What does a slime token do? It reduces your action number by one. Right. So you only have two actions. You get slime, you only have one action on that turn. Right? You get two slime tokens, you can't do anything, and you have to rest, like Tom, Tommy said a few minutes ago, to get rid of them all. Right? All right, so we've got movement, we've got combat, we've got ghosts with different hit point levels. If you hit a ghost that only has the level one ghost, right? So let's say this guy rolls his three or better, hits the level one ghost. Normally you'd put one of these little uh, proton streams on it to signify that it's been hit. And by the way, they're usually color coded. Yeah, we, we each get our own colors of these things because sometimes it matters. Once you capture that ghost, he only has one hit point, he's been captured, he now goes on to Tommy's card. So we're capturing ghosts, we're putting them in our ghost traps. We might put them into the, uh, into the Ecto-1, we might not, depending on our character. And the goal of the game, of the, this scenario, was to capture Slimer and close these things called... Uh, they're called slime gates in this particular scenario. They have different names in different scenarios, but that's where ghosts spawn from. So I don't know if you can see over here. We've got a whole table full of ghosts here. Oh, uh, that when we have each done our turn, right? We've taken our two actions. We've maneuvered. We roll this special dice, which has got symbols on it, and those symbols match the ghost gates, the slime gates in this scenario. So if I were to roll this and I get a square like I just did, then we'd take a ghost from over here in the pool and it would spawn on the ghost gate. Right? And then we do it all over again. Then I take it, then you take a turn, I take a turn, Gus takes a turn, then we roll for actions for the ghost to spawn. Right? So there's victory conditions in each of the scenarios. So there's scenario cards. One, there's a scenario card that lets us set up the map. These tiles are numbered, right? You can see that S2 on the card. On the scenario card, it tells you which tiles to use and what order to put them in. All right. So this one's pretty basic. It's a square map. There's a street with some park, parks on either side. And it starts off with a number of ghosts out there and the Slimer's down here. Um, and our job is to capture Slimer and close all the ghost gates. How do you close the ghost gates, Tommy? You zap them twice. You if zap, you zap them. them and hit, you get slime. If you zap them and miss, you get slime and a ghost comes out. Right, uh, so actually you zap them and hit, you don't get slimed. Oh. It's when you miss that you get slimed. So those conditions are outlined on this card. Right, so to hit, to close, you have to hit it with a roll of four or better for this scenario. And when you hit it, you put one of those stream counters on it, right? Like that. And it takes two, according to the scenario card, to close the gate. When you close the gate, no more ghosts can come out of it. And you see little, I ain't afraid of no ghost symbol, right? Correct. There you go. And that means the next time somebody rolls a wavy symbol, one of the way, oh, it's over here, wavy symbol, it no ghosts will come out of it. Nothing will happen. Right? When you close the very last ghost gate on this map, all the ghosts disappear. Because we've sealed off the spirit realm. And then that's one of the two victory conditions for this particular map. The other one is to capture Slimer. And Slimer is a level 5, a class 5 slime. And he has to be hit four times by two different Ghostbusters. Four times four times by at least two different Ghostbusters. So I can hit him three times and you can hit him once and that counts. Well, right? uh, we can both... I could hit him two times and you could hit him two times. Exactly right. That goes back in there. Or we could all... Or, or all three of us can hit him once and then somebody can hit him with a different one. Yes, absolutely. So our actions are drive the car around, 
and the car goes much faster than the Ghostbusters. The Ghostbusters can move two spaces. If they're in the car and they choose to use the car, he can move six spaces. So they get around the map pretty quick with the car, right? And then get out of the car, shoot ghosts, capture ghosts, gain experience, close gates, defeat the boss. And then as you get experience, you get more and more stuff. So, like I said, we started off as level two for this particular scenario. And then we stayed as level two. We did, yeah. We did, Well, it's a really short game, right? It ended up going really fast because... We, when we played yesterday hey, with our friends, I reached level three just because of all of the slimming. Right. When we played yesterday, it took a lot longer because there were four people playing and... Nobody it, knew what to do. Nobody knew what they were doing, so there was slime everywhere. And I was gaining experience left and right. Yeah. Um, in the longer games or in the campaigns, you can string missions together, and then your character will level all the way up to level 5, which has all kinds of good stuff. So Spangler's level 5 ability is all Ghostbusters re-roll any ones. Mine is all Ghostbusters may, re may re-roll the movement die once, once per failed proton roll. Oh, oh, the 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 river die for this. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, Zetamore gives everybody an extra space to move, and Thankman level five ability lets you shoot one space further. So that's pretty cool. So um, that's it, right? So we're zapping ghosts. The ghosts are spawning. It's a race against the spawn. If you uh, you you know how you lose. If all the ghosts leave the spirit If there realm. aren't any ghosts left in the spirit realm here. Right? So ghosts start out there. There's a handful that are here, and it's part of the scenario. A bunch of them are out on the board. As we capture ghosts and we put them in the car, they go back to the spirit realm. So if we were holding a bunch of ghosts on our thing, right, and there were only a couple of ghosts left, as soon as, it was, as soon as a ghost spawns and there isn't a ghost left in the spirit realm, we lose. Oh, right? wait. Since that's clean, I now see that there's multiple islands and one big one. Yeah, this is the spirit realm. All right. So that's the game. So it's pretty easy. Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah, I did. What was a rule that we didn't do right? Or didn't remember? Uh, we didn't remember how exactly sliming worked for a bit. And that's right. So w w when we were playing, um, once you get slimed, that takes an action away. And I think that that means you're done, right? So if your first thing causes you to get slimed, you don't get to play. Any, you don't get to play anymore. It goes to the next player. I think that's the way it works. I think the other thing that we uh, that we didn't remember to do every round was roll the uh, event dice. Right, the event dice is the thing that, that spawns the ghosts, but it also can move the ghosts. Right, so it's a six-sided die, and it's got each of the gates on it, but it's also got this sort of chaos symbol here. And when you, if you roll that, then all the ghosts move in a random direction, which means you roll the PK meter die one more time, and then all the ghosts move. So that means they could squish people and slime people and do stuff. Squish people? I don't know about squish. Yeah, people. they slime people. Yeah, stay puffed. Yeah, stay puffed might squish them. Um, of course, he might pop them tomorrow. What about you? Was there a rule that we that was confusing that we didn't do right for you? No. No, it's pretty straightforward. The donuts are cool, and they generally fit on the on the ghosts that we're trying to get. So this guy needs three of them. So you kind of have to hang them off of the appendages, right, in order to fit three of them on there. Yeah. I suppose you could probably just put them underneath. Uh, but that's a cool thing. You can, as the ghost walks around the uh, the thing, you can you can see how many uh, proton streams you have on it. The terrain maps, I think, are also something we didn't need to care too much about. There's red lines and yellow lines and orange lines, and those have different effects on the ability to move or see. Um, but if it's red, you can't see or move through it. If it's red, you can't see or move through it. If it's orange, you can't move, move. through it, but you can <laughs> see through it. And if it's yellow, you can't see through it, but you can move through it. So each of the terrain, each of these terrain maps has different effects. Uh, so keeping track of that was, and then otherwise, it's a it's a fun game. I liked it. Um, 
Are we ready to give it a score? Yep. What do you think, Gus? Two. Two? Two cabbages? Three. You're going to give it three? Yeah, it was pretty fun game. You liked it? You liked it as much as you liked the other games you gave it a three to? All right, so two, then a three. What's your final four? Ooh, I think I'm going to give it a two. I think it's uh Two, two, three. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it a two. So I think it's going to get seven total. Um, I don't know why I'm not giving it a three. I think that some of it's a little confusing. So it might just be because I'm not familiar with the rules, right? I love the slime mechanic. That's interesting. The two actions are cool. There's a little bit of randomness with the dice rolling. We each get our own attack dice. There's some movement that happens. I love the little, I love the component. The components are actually really cool. I really do love the ghosts. The ghosts are awesome. And the characters are pretty good too, right? So all of our Ghostbusters look pretty nice. The Ecto-1 looks nice. And then, of course, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is huge. I think the next time we play, we play with him. But that's going to be a bigger battle, I think. Yeah, he's going to squish it. Like so, yeah, well, that's one of the things he does. Is he, he does. He's not like He can always see a Ghostbuster, so he can always move towards one. Well, I mean, I guess you could just eat him. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't eat him. He's too big. So well, that's it. So we give it seven cabbages, right? Rip chunks off of him and then take a bite out of it. Well, that's what happened in the movie, right? Where they blasted him with the proton pack. And pieces of him fell off and squished on the people down below. And then they started eating him. No, I don't think they ate him. All right, so that's it. Uh, seven cabbages. Fun I mean, game. Action, action based. There's tiles to make the maps. That means that each of the scenarios are going to be different. That'd be fun to be a kid in that last scene. It would be fun to be a kid and just, have all that marshmallow. Yeah, it'd just be a lot of I don't know, demonic, squished marshmallow man? Burnt. Might that be, that might be a might bit much. That possess you because the, because it possess the yeah. clothes of the dudes in the show. That's it. So, the components are great. The gameplay is easy. I don't think it took more than a half an hour for us to play it. So, it was pretty fast. And that's it. Seven cabbages. I'm comfortable Seven with cabbage. that. All right. You want to do the outro, Gus? Subscribe, like, and hit that bell, Tommy. Leave a comment if you wish. Eat plenty of cabbages. Not, Not us, though. That'd be kids. Good. All right. See you in the next one. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.